Cecily Swan knew it well, this path. She'd walked it all of her life and was in an old familiar. Lifting her head, she looked up at the grand house towering above her on the hill, Cavendon Hall, one of the great stately homes of England. It was the finest of all in Yorkshire. The house was her destination this morning, as it had been so often when she was growing up. Her parents and her brother Henry lived in Little Scale Village at the edge of Cavendon Park, just as their ancestors had done for more than 170 years. It was a lovely Friday morning in the middle of July, and there was no hint of rain today. The sunshine streamed down, bathing the house in that crystalline northern light which gave the exterior its soft, peculiar sheen at different times of day. Cecily glanced about as she walked on. She had half expected to see Geneva loitering here, but there was no sign of the gypsy girl. The Romney wagons were visible on the hill, the far end of the fields. Geneva's family still lived on the sixth earl's land that was given. He had always permitted it. She supposed they would stay there forever. But so much else had changed. Cavendon Hall looked the same. But it wasn't what it used to be. It was a different place. In fact, many things were different now. The Great War had changed everything. And everyone, as her father Walter was forever saying, the good old days were over and nothing could, would ever be the same again. And his, his, his words were only too true. Thankfully, her father and brother had come back safely from the Great War. But by, Guy Ingram, the heir to the Mulberry earldom, had not. He died for his country fighting in France and was buried there along with his comrade in arms. They had all mourned him, every person in the three villages, as well as his family. Not because he was the heir, but because he had been one of the nicest young men. Now it was Miles who would one day inherit the earldom and everything that it entailed. Miles Ingham. Her heart tightened at the thought of him. He had been her constant companion throughout her childhood, her best friend, and later her sweetheart. She loved him with all her being. She still did. That he had told her many times that he felt the same and that the one day would, they would be married, but that had not happened. Miles had been forced to marry another girl, a suitable girl, Clarissa Meldrew, the daughter of Lord Meldrew, the right kind of girl who would give Miles an aristocratic air, but that w was the way it was with the gentry. Future heirs dominated their lives and their destinies. Cicely came to a stop at a sudden thought struck her. After a moment, she veered to her left and headed in the direction of the rose garden. She was needed a few m minutes to think, and anyway, she was too early for her meeting. A few seconds later, she was pulling open the heavy oak door and going down the steps. It was a fragrant spot, this old walled garden filled with the scent of the late blooming roses. She breathed in the heady smell, and she sat down in a wrought iron garden seat. The spot had always been a haven of peace and beauty. Holding herself completely still, she closed her eyes, wondering why she had agreed to do this, to help Miles manage the events planned by the Earl for the family reunion. It was probably the most stupid thing she had ever done in her life. Only if you are stupid, she told herself. Obviously, Aunt Charlotte thinks you are capable of handling a difficult situation or she wouldn't have asked you to help out. Her aunt's voice echoed as she went back in her mind to the discussion they'd had weeks ago. She remembered her aunt's words very well. Lady Daphne is the only one capable of managing the weekend with Miles, but she has so much on her hands, what with running Cavendon and her five children underfoot. I personally would appreciate it if you would help her, Cece. She thought now of the way she had tried to wriggle out of it, not liking the idea at all. She had muttered something about one of his sisters being better at the job but her aunt had fluffed them off with a dismissive wave of her hand. There must might be difficulties, Susie, and we need someone strong like you. Someone who can be tough, it needs to be. Well, she could be tough. She knew that. She Mostly, she would have to be tough with herself and with Miles. She had not had a conversation with him for the last six years. They'd spoken the odd times they'd run into each other here at Cavendon or waved, but that was all. Six years ago, she had vowed never to let him near her again, and her aunt had nodded her approval when she had confided in Charlotte. I'll walk alone and devote myself to my career as a fashion designer, Cecily had said. Charlotte had looked pleased and relieved. Unexpectedly, Charlotte had asked for help with Miles now, and it puzzled Cecily. Actually, she had no choice. Cecily sighed and sat up straighter. 
She owed Charlotte Swan everything. It was her aunt who had backed her fashion business, presented her with her first shop at the Burlington Arcade, made her career possible, and it was Charlotte's money that had originally funded the venture. They became business partners, and they still were, and worked extremely well together. She trusts me to handle myself correctly, Cecily decided. She knows I won't succumb to his charms, become involved with him on a personal level. She understands that the pain he caused me runs far too deep. Besides, she, she's fully aware I'm devoted to my business. That is my life. Standing up, Cecily walked out of the rose garden, went up the hill be toward the house. She felt better. She could handle Miles Ingram. She wasn't afraid of him. She wasn't afraid anymore, for that matter. In the past six years, she had learned to be truly independent, to stand on her own two feet, and to make her own decisions. Furthermore, she was a big success. Women loved her clothes, bought them by the cartload, and not only in London, but in America as well. Already she had made two trips to New York, and her name was as well known on both sides of the Atlantic. Miles had his problems, and so did Cavendon. Her future was full of brightness and challenge and even more success. With a little luck, Miles Ingham was part of the past. Her eyes were focused on the future. She would help him out this weekend, then she would go back to London and get on with her work and leave Miles to his own devices. There was no place in her life for him. She would never forget that day six years ago when he had told her he was getting married to another woman. He had broken her heart, and she would never forgive him.